Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I source cars for people on a professional basis. Although most of the cars I source are between £1,000 and £5,000, very often I've been asked to show something a little bit cheaper on the channel and so I came up with No Budget Reviews, the series where we look at cars that you can buy in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand pounds and you can enjoy driving. We don't film this in an expensive manner, we don't use separate microphones, we don't use fluid head tripods, we don't even use a DSLR, but we do have a lot of fun. Well viewers, last time we were here it was uh, July and it was well, it was exceptionally good weather. Unfortunately, it's not now. It is rather damp, but my spirits have not been dampened fully because here is a 1988 Austin Maestro 1.3 Mayfair. It's really strange because this car doesn't have the word Austin on it, but on the logbook, it will be under um, Austin. Um, October 88 was when they got rid of the Austin name on the Mini, Metro, Maestro and Montego, rather like that Montego Mayfair over there. But the Mayfairs were actually um, uh, discontinued at the same time as the Montego facelift. Um, they, they were no more. They were introduced about February 86 with the, um, the new dashboard that came into the Maestro about that time and they ran to October 88, uh, apart from the Mini Mayfair that ran a little bit longer. So um, we've got a very nostalgic interior for me, but 1.3 Mayfairs like this are very, very rare. They were made them just for one year. Unlike an abandoned Pla, we haven't got any uh, sort of wood on top of the uh, door card, but that's fine because my grandfather actually had a 1.6 Mayfair. It looked a bit like this. It, was, it had the 1.6 S series engine. This is the uh, A series, 1.3. Um, but everything we recognise in here, the coin tray, we've actually got a rear wash wipe in here. Clearly, most Maestros weren't designed to have a rear wash wipe, which is why the controls are separate. Um, this is the earlier Montego style of dashboard. The facelifted Montego's got an actually slightly later one, but um, the Maestro from about February 86 until the end of production, when you consider the end of production to be, is really up to you because they made it in Bulgaria and China and then in kits from Bulgaria back in Britain for quite some time but officially production finished around 1994-1995. This car has only done 50,000 miles, we have absolute decadent luxury in here uh, with electric window switches in here, a five-speed gearbox um, and a rev counter with that um, Caravan light, which is to do with uh, it's like, a, like a tow bar setup. Ashtray, of course, quite a fancy one as well. Make sure we don't damage that too much. There we go. I remember these vents so well from my youth traveling in my uh, uh, grandfather's um, maestro and blanking plugs where the window winders should be. That would be a switch for electric mirrors if the car had it. Some Maestro actually did come with electric mirrors. It was the same switch as a Rover 800. I don't know actually if this Mayfair should have had a leather trimmed steering wheel. Um, a lot of the parts in this car have been replaced because it was very heavily vandalized before Patrick who owns it actually bought it. So all the windows have been replaced and the mirror glasses and the front and rear lights um, and the uh, steering wheel. You can see where the vandals actually broke the cowling for, for the steering lock as well. That's why it's got a second key, um, because the steering lock has been replaced. Original radio for time, I think it's a Philips unit. It's quite a stretch to reach the controls, and someone who designed this dashboard didn't really think that much, because if you're sort of driving along, you cannot see this fan switch at all. You can sort of see um, the direction of the air here, and the uh, hot and cold lever, but you can't see the fan switch at all don't know what that was up there something who knows um maybe a front fog light switch because there's the rear and a fog light switch and things are here um we've seen two masters on the channel before the early dashboards and of course the advantage which is just sitting over there as well that's appeared on it one of only uh, two remaining advantages patrick's got his cassettes in here because that's what you need glove box is a bit i think that's actually locked let's see if we can um 
get in bed. Yes, there we go. That's, I think that's the right key. No. It's this one. No. Glad box isn't carpeted today. Right, well, uh, let's take a look at the boot instead, shall we? So I'm having to hold the, um, the thing up because the boot struts, well, the car doesn't actually accept many more because they were sort of, you know, integra integral to the, the, the rig. It's how we get, so I'm just holding it up at the moment. The parcel shelf was also taken, which is a shame. We've got a, got a non-matching one from another car. But, uh, yeah, you can see the big practical boot. We've seen Maestro's on this channel so many times now that we know it's much more practical than virtually anything else in the class. That's one of the reasons why people are to buy them. Right, I shall... Um, just pause a second and love this tailgate. Mayfair, um, no, no Austin badge. It's so confusing. But maybe they just decided not to make the Austin badges anymore. I don't know. Um, nice two-tone colour, of course. Had a, had a bit of repair, but you know, you show me a Maestro that hasn't been in the garage all its life that um, hasn't had a bit of repair around the arches. Most of them have by now always strikes me with these just how much headroom there is the only reason my, why i'm feeling something is because the headlining's sagging because well they all do that don't they you know it's just the way that it goes this one's got a manual sunroof as well which we won't be using today the sunroof doesn't sit quite flush on top of the car but it's not actually leaking so it must be okay map pockets normal rear windows just move that towards me a second ashtray both sides and ho oh, oh, top luxury because we've got a Mayfair Ugh. an armrest as well if you wanted a leather interior then you had to go and get the Van den Plan model um, but this is pretty nice this Velour interior I like it similar to the uh, Montego over there which of course we've seen before but we're now going to be driving it too but, uh, you know, I'd probably better um, have a look under the bonnet because that's one thing we haven't seen in a Maestro before. The three we've actually driven so far. Don't be deceived, viewers. This isn't, isn't an R-series. <laughs> yeah, we don't talk about the R-series in uh, Maestro circles. It's not the best engine ever. Uh, this is compatible, though, with the A-series. Look how much room there is with the engine bay. I, I don't think I've seen anything like this since the um probably the 1.3 ls got we filled with three jacket reviews last year so much room in here um I'm sure patrick will get a cap for that windscreen washer reservoir but i mean there's brake servo all exposed there's i think that's the entire gearbox under see there there's the oil filter volkswagen gearbox in this car five speed and um, some of the early ones had a four speed gearbox it's actually got an auto choke on it as well. It says Maestro on the front, but it's still got the Austin Rover logo, so it shows you that, you know, that, that actually we're still under Austin Rover just about because the later Maestros didn't have that little badge. They just had the word Maestro with that other little green and red sign. Sorry, no, not green, green and blue, I should say. Right, I think it's time to go for a little drive. Well, viewers, we've still got no power steering. Um, not that I suppose it matters in this so much. The engine also, it has an automatic choke and it's not very good at warming up particularly. You have to sort of encourage it a bit by judicious use of the throttle. We are still on a carburetor here. The um, fuel injected 1.3s didn't come through until the 1990s. It's so strange, you know, having this a series engine with uh, 68 horsepower. The um, HLE models actually had um, just 64 horsepower. It's interesting hearing this with this Volkswagen Source 5 speed gearbox. I think this is the same gearbox that they put into the Polo that I drove on Gentleman Second Hand Classics. Can you still buy one of these Mayfairs for under a thousand pounds? Well, to be honest, I doubt it. Like they're so, they're so rare. Um, they're extremely rare cars now, and um, they do command sort of 
you know, reasonable money now. Van den Plaas, a little bit more. But maybe a 1.3L, which is the same powertrain as this, you can pick one up for a thousand pounds just about. We've actually opened the sunroof cover in this as well to get a bit more light. Yeah, the engine's not, it's not the smoothest engine, it's still not warmed up. I mean, we're, I can see on the, <laughs> you can see on the temperature gauge, we're still on cold, so it might take us a little while to warm it up, but so far it just still has those micro, moisture attributes. Um, this one seems to rattle a lot less than other Maestros I've driven as well, which is really good. Right, we will go down the road and pick up some actual speed. Right view is time for some performance. So we don't have any gearbox wine in this because it's not trudged in some. It's an end on gearbox. So we'll just get up to 70 if we actually can. It's not, it's not too bad, the gearbox is alright. There we go, we're in. But we haven't actually managed to reach, uh, reach 70. Probably due to my lack of familiarity with uh, keeping an A series on board. And the ride seems as well a bit better than the other two maestros that I've driven with Patrick's. The other engines available in, in this car were the 1.6 S series, which came after the R series, from which this gets up to sort of air cleaner. That had um, 85 horsepower. Then there were some 2 litre engines, two of them. One of them was the 2 litre EFI that was used um, in the MD Maestro 2 litre EFI. Named. And then uh, that, the uh, MG Maestro Turbo, the 2 litre rear 515 horsepower. The 2 litre turbo, wow, 152 horsepower. If you can find yourself an MG Maestro Turbo these days, those are worth serious money. There were also <coughs> some uh, engines of the forbidden fuel variety. But, due to controversial government legislation and all kinds of other reasons, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. Well, there wouldn't be no budget reviews without the mount in the way. That's just the way that it goes on this channel. The road is a little bit bumpy, um, and of course, well, you know, we've uh, got this, uh, rather uncharacteristically wet day in North Wales. You see, normally when you go near Fristatton, it's always, it's always sunny. Um, but yes, I'm quite enjoying this view. One thing I've noticed, I don't know if it's just this car, but the seat doesn't go back particularly far. I think maybe you've got a lot of stuff behind the seat and so it's not doing it, but other than that, it's pretty comfortable. Me and my grandfather used to drive, I don't know, if, couple of hours in one of these without a break, it's absolutely fine. And even me, it's a bit of wipers working, that's brilliant. Yes, it's a, it's a nice, reasonably easy car to drive. It's not quite as easy as something like an N13 Sunny. Those are a little bit easier than this, but it's got a little bit more character, perhaps. And you know, I'm biased because we've had a lot of maestros on this channel. We've still got more to come, and uh, I, I'm very fond of them. But you know, I, they are just becoming increasingly beloved classics that are appreciating in value now, and I really do understand that. Let's see if we can overtake this um, this car here. All our, our 68 horsepower. Yes, viewers, yes, we can. I think we're about to reach 70. Come on. Oh, it's getting noisy. 
Jersey. We just we just hit it before um, before the 411 viewers. Not the fastest car ever. Also, uh, in in this, and I imagine all the post uh, probably post Facer, but much of the newer dashboards, 30, 50, and 70 are very very clearly marked. That's something that was carried over to the um, things like the Rover R8, even in the MG3, they've all got that sort of clear emphasis on those speed limits because in this country those are very important speed limits. And so, you know, country made for this market, come over this market, should have them, it does. Right, we'll go up the hill viewers and then we'll come back a bit later. So viewers, the uh, A-Series engine maestro, is this something that you should consider with your budget up to a thousand pounds? Well, if you could live with the fact that some of the parts availability on these very old cars isn't massively good these days, and uh, you know, it's things like auto chokes if the car's got one, um, and uh, you know, bits of interior trim aren't always the most cooperative thing, then yes, I, I don't see why not. Um, I prefer a slightly more powerful engine myself. I prefer a little bit more luxury. This is almost getting there, but once you've driven a Maestro van den Pla, which I have, um, you kind of don't really want to go back to anything else. That's sort of the problem. Um, but you know, this, this is, is a very rare car. It's fascinating to actually drive a, a Maestro Mayfair uh, because, you know, it was one of the ones I remember from my, my grandfather's five Maestros that he had. But there we go. Uh, thank you ever so much indeed for watching this episode of No Budget Reviews. Um, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, uh, to like this video and to leave a comment below. It really does help us out and uh, allows us to go on making the sort of content that you all seem to like. Social media links are down in the description below. Thank you.